So inshallah we can start now. Okay, so assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Today inshallah we are going to, uh, to um, talk about the rulings uh, of uh, Ramadan, fasting Ramadan, obligation and timing. This is the first part or the maybe first chapter that you can find in the book that we are considering for our class. And today, inshallah, we're going to, uh, to have the, the most important part of Siyam, uh, which is related to uh, Niyya, and also we are going to talk about the timing of the Siyam and so on and so forth. So before going and indulging into the main topic, we should always remind ourselves with the purpose of Siyam in general and the purpose of, um, of Ramadan as a whole. Uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given to us a lot of opportunities that we should always exploit in order to elevate our souls and to try to cleanse our hearts from the diseases. And Ramadan actually is considered to be a golden opportunity for all of us to implement that. And you will not find in any other time uh, in the entire year a month that is dedicated only for this. Cleansing your heart, trying to make the link between you and your Lord to be corrugionless, try to think again about the meaning of life and the meaning of other things. So this is a golden opportunity. Try to exploit it, try to get the most out of it. And inshallah, if you are going to strive in order to make or to get the most out of Ramadan, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will grant you the uh, tawfiq for really granting or really obtaining the, the most out of Ramadan. So we should always not to miss this opportunity. Let's start, inshallah, with the, um, this part in the book, which is, it was written here in chapter, uh, chapter 1 in fasting, which is related to uh, fasting in general. So fasting with the month of Ramadan is one of the five pillars of Islam and is taken for granted to be one of the obligations ordained by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We call it, it's ma'loom min al-deen bil-darura. That fasting Ramadan are from or among from the five main pillars of Islam. So uh, subhanAllah we find that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordained us or ordained some commands that really we are in need in it. I mean that there are different between the obligation and the permissible things or just recommended things. Ramadan, I was thinking about this many times that why Ramadan is obligation not a recommendation for example for us who wants to take it or who wants to fast he can fast and who does not want so it's okay for him <clears throat> but actually no this is not the right way for uh, looking to Ramadan Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because this is the Sharia ah, this is the Islam this is the Sharia ah of Islam that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is mandated upon you and obligated you to do some certain actions Without these certain actions, you're not going to protect yourself from the dunya. And even you are not able to protect yourself from yourself. So for example, I was thinking about even a salah. Why salah should be commanded or should be an obligation upon us? And this actually is related directly to the nature of the human being. We need a reminder every time of the salah. And five times in a day and night we need to pray. So we need a reminder. Because really if you are going to stay without any kind of remembrance of Allah or without being reminded that you are a slave and there is a God and you need to always link yourself with them, you are going to lose a lot. And you are going to find that your heart is rusting. Okay, Iran. That is, it is rusted with, uh, with, with things that is blocking you from feeling really what is the meaning of being created and what is the meaning of the creator and what is the life means to you and so on. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala legislating for us or commanding us to be linked with him in a day five times. Actually this is something that is like a training program that you need to be within a day for five times continuously. But there is another aspect of your life that is very important to be dealt with in an annual basis that is Ramadan which is that you have 30 days for example they are going to give to you after the 30 days you are going to be given or granted a certificate 
which is related to you and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You're going to be said like this, that if you guarantee yourself within 30 days, then you are going to have this certificate, which is that really you are free from any kind of desires. Because Ramadan, as we are going to see here, inshallah, it's all about preventing not the illegal things, but preventing yourself from the legal things. We are going to stop or abstain from drinking, from eating, and sexual intercourse, right? These are the main three things that we are going to prevent ourselves from. But actually, they are legal for us to do, right? The point here is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is giving this as a kind of strategy for you to control yourself. Day after day, month after month, and year after year, you will find that your soul, your, your desires, your nature in general as a human being, it's always commanding you to do so. And you will find that you are going to be slipped into what we call it an obsessive behavior. That you are going to find yourself that is obsessed to a certain behavior that you cannot control it. You have no control over it. From here, from here, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has ordained for us or commanded us to make one month to control us, to control everything. And not even in eating, drinking, and sexual intercourse, no. It is also controlling ourselves in terms of the way that we are talk, the way that we are speaking, the way that we are looking to things, the way that we are even, uh, the discourse of uh, reciting of the Qur'an, recitation of the Qur'an, the salawat, extra salawat are there. The time itself is very, uh, it is, um, uh, we can say it's holy time for us to make dua, prayers and so on, right? Why? Because at the end you need really to stop, look to yourself and control yourself in every different aspect that you could imagine, okay? So this is Ramadan or the hikmah or the wisdom of Ramadan. I'm going to talk inshallah about this in some parts in, in, this, um, in this chapter. The obligation of fasting Ramadan is provided in the Quran and Sunnah and the consensus. We have, uh, we, as we said many times, we have different ways in order to say this is a command from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and should be obeyed or followed. The first one, whenever we have the evidence from the Quran, the second, the evidence from the Sunnah, the prophetic tradition, and the third one is the evidence from the consensus, al ijma okay, or Qiyas after that, which is the analogy. Here it is from Quran, Sunnah, and Ijma' al-Ulama, Ramadan is an obligation. <clears throat> Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala exalted be, he says, O you who have believed, decreed upon you, is fasting as it was decreed upon the people before you. That kutiba alaykum siyam kama kutiba ala ladina min qablikum la'allakum tattaqoon. Right? So that you may attain piety. So the main purpose of this is to attain piety. Taqwa. Okay? By controlling yourself. Taqwa, it has a different meaning. In general. Taqwa, it has a different meaning. Gut consciousness, for example. Taqwa in Arabic means that taqiyya means that to protect yourself. Yaqi nafsahu means that to protect himself from the threat or from the threats from, or from any kind of harm. So this is the meaning of taqwa. And attaining taqwa will not be obtained or attained unless you put an effort. Okay? It's something that is really high and elevated. You are not going to reach it unless that you are putting yourself in an, uh, putting, an, uh, putting an effort, putting yourself in a training program, for example, so that you can attain taqwa. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala decreed upon us this program, which is Ramadan, for 30 days. Allah exalted be, he says, the month of Ramadan is that in which was revealed the Quran a guidance for people and dear proofs of guidance and, and criterion. So whoever cites the new moon of month, let him fast it. Okay. This is in the Quran. Okay. <clears throat> As for the proofs stated in the Sunnah, this is actually the proof com coming from the Quran. Okay. This is in Surah Al-Baqarah, you will find all the ayat related to uh, fasting and commands of fasting Ramadan. As for the prophetic tradition, that Rasulullah peace and blessings be upon him, said Islam 
is based on five pillars and from one of them is the fasting. So in Ramadan, okay? Five main five pillars of Islam. And as one of the in addition, there are numerous well-known hadith stating obligation of fasting Ramadan and uh, its virtues. Furthermore, Muslim scholars uniformly agree on its obligation, maintaining that whoever denies it is considered a disbeliever. <coughs> the consensus in general of the ulama is related that the person should fast Ramadan because of the numerous evidences, as we uh, as we said, and who is not the one who is denying Ramadan or saying that Ramadan is not a, uh, is not a, considered to be an obligation, then he is considered to be a kafir or a disbeliever. The divine wisdom, this is what the author is writing regarding this issue, the divine wisdom behind the decree of fasting is that it involves purification of the human soul from immorality and vice. For fasting blocks the evil ways of Satan, as Satan circulates in one's body just like the circulation of the blood. Shaitan yajri min ibn Adam majra dam min al min al that the Satan is circulating in the human body as the blood is circulating. So subhanAllah, if you are going to control yourself, I mean that eating, drinking and so on, you are, not, you, are not, you are going to control the Satan in general. Because whenever you are, you know that, subhanAllah, this is something that is related to one another, that if there is a plenty of food, drink, and you are and you are excessively eating, drinking, and putting yourself in places that is easy for you to find food, it is accessible for you, and so on. You will find that Satan is coming and whispering to you. I mean that in general, in general, it is you are, you are open and easy to be tackled by the Satan, and easy to fall into the desire traps, very easy. But look to the person that he doesn't find a food, or he can't hardly, he could provide the sustenance for his wife or his family and his, himself. It is rarely to come to him such kind of things or whispering or this kind of in, uh, insinuation of the, of the Satan. I mean that it is, there is a relation between the two. If you are going to control it, control this kind of desires, then you will find that you are blocking the means of the Satan to approach you. Okay, so this is as they said, this is one of the wisdom. Another one, whenever one eats or drinks, one's soul becomes vulnerable to, uh, to one's desires. Its will weakens. It will weakens, as we said, the, the soul will weakens because of eating and drinking too much. Okay, one's soul becomes vulnerable, it will weakens. Its, uh, sorry, its will weakens. And one becomes more, um, uh, more inclined toward worship. Uh, sorry, more or less uh, directed toward worship, which will not be the case when one is in a state of fasting, as we mentioned. Moreover, fasting induces the worldly pleasure, personal desires, and draws Muslims' attention to the hereafter. Yes. Another thing which is important also considered from considered to be from the wisdom is it draws your attention to the hereafter. Because again we are making this, we are preventing ourselves from eating, drinking and other things because of what? Because of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So you're going to be indirectly linked to Al Akhirah, which is the main difference between us in general as Muslims and any other non Muslims. That we are putting al-akhirah, the hereafter, in front of us. So we are doing everything in this dunya for this case only. And even with this, of course, we are we are doing things related to dunya. And subhanallah, whenever there is something, uh, subhanallah, whenever you look to the way that Islam is giving to us the guidance, you will find that it's even different than the other kind of philosophies and so on. In India, for example, they are making a kind of torturement, a uh, kind of punishment or torture for themselves and for their buddies by putting their buddies or stretching on uh, kind of nails and so on. Do you know? This is harming yourself. 
And is there a kind of, uh, of benefit in this or not? Maybe there are some benefits. Okay? Maybe there are some benefits. But actually, there are some side effects that are going to be taken here. Okay? Actually, whenever you are looking to Ramadan, it is going to control, or whatever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordained, is going to control every aspect. That even in Ramadan, for example, that we're saying that you do not give ill speech about others. You do not, or you should not slander. You should not backbite. You should not, you should not backbite. You should not uh, gossip or making gossiping, right? This is why, because in Islam, it's a full solution for everything. Ramadan is actually controlling, controlling yourself and controlling the attitude that you are doing or your attitude toward the other people, your fellow human beings in the same society. But look to other kind of philosophies and so on, they are just isolating the person away and just he is torturing himself and try to elevate his spirit and so on, right? So maybe we can find some benefits, but actually it is defective, it's flawed, it's not perfect. But in Quran or in Siyam in general, you will find that it deals with the different aspects and you are going to find really that fasting is different than, uh, than any other philosophies or maybe meditation type of things and so on. Because why, as I said, this is because of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's the perfect message from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We are going to follow. Okay. Furthermore, fasting makes one sympathize with the poor and the needy and feel their suffering due to the hardship of the hunger and, th and thirst one experiences during fasting. Of course, that you are going to share what the the poor are experiencing, that you're going to feel the hunger and thirst and so on and so forth. Uh, whenever you, you are going to explain the uh, fasting or Ramadan for non-believers or non-Muslims, they are always uh, emphasizing on this point, which is that you, we, are, uh, we are making or feeling the same feeling of the poor who doesn't find the drink and food and so on. And even this is right, of course, of course this is right. But they are missing the main point. But they are missing the main point. This is why intellectual or the human being intellect, sometimes it is inclined toward the things that is, can find it's good. Because of course, if you go to anybody, whether he's a Muslim or non-Muslim, and say to him that we want to share the same experience, uh, uh, as the poor, they are going to say, they are going to say, yes, that's very kind of nice value and we're going to do it. But subhanAllah, the main purpose, the main purpose which has been stated in the Quran regarding this issue was to attain what? To attain what we said? To attain taqwa. Yes, to attain taqwa. The, the main purpose of Ramadan, if we said that there are different purposes and we have different kinds of um, of rewards, then the first one is to attain taqwa, God consciousness, or piety. Okay, yeah. that's the main purpose. I'm curious, like, can someone know when they attain taqwa? Can, you can know or not. Yeah. What do you think about this? I think that you are going. Okay, this is a, a good question actually. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but uh, there are things between the person himself and Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. And nobody else could, um, could judge whether that you attain this taqwa or not. But we can claim that you can feel, you can feel something that is really is changing inside you. For example, if I said to you that, what do you feel whenever that you are uh, angry and you are, for example, giving ill speech about others and you are fighting with one of your friends, for example. After this fighting, what do you feel? And for example, after that you are making the Fajr prayer, where there, there is a stillness and nobody is talking and there is no sounds or voices and something, and you are making prayer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or dua. Is there a difference between the two? Of course there is a difference, right? You can feel that really your soul here, <clears throat> your soul here is totally different than your soul here, right? So that's the same. That piety is something that you are going to feel it inside your, in, inside your heart, and you are going to feel 
that is outwardly as well. Okay? And it's actually ma'asiyah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in general, making sinful actions in general. It is directly related to your tawfiq in dunya. Okay? Inni la'asul laha fa'ajidu dhalika fi khuluq fi khuluq dabbati wa zawjati that I am making the sinful action. This is one of the righteous predecessors he was mentioning about that. Whenever I commit a sinful action, I found that he said that as a bad luck, for example, I found that in my dab, but in the, in the horse or whatever that animal that I'm using for the transportation, and and in the attitude of my wife, I mean that the most closest or the closest one to me. So this means that sinful actions. Uh, I remember that in last Ramadan, maybe or two Ramadans, I gave this kind of things that. Um, uh, that is, you will find uh, and uh, that you are going to find if you are going, if you are making sinful actions and, and sins and so on, you are going to find that um, many things, tangible things, okay? One of them that you are going to be like um, not, not, uh, not happy, not feeling the delight of the mu'min in this dunya you're going to find it in even the attitude with the people and so on. So, yes, uh, I guarantee that you're going to find something different whenever you are talking about taqwa in yourself. Okay. Do you have any questions regarding this point? Okay. Okay, according to the Sharia law, law okay. According to the Sharia law, fasting means that abstaining from certain acts such as eating, drinking, having sexual intercourse with one's spouse, committing immoralities, and all other acts of fasting, of fasting, person is prohibited, prohibited to do as stated in the Sharia, which will be elaborated on later. Allah willing, Allah willing. The prescribed time for daily fasting begins from the daybreak, namely the manifest whiteness in the horizon. Let's go now to the to the Sharia law. We call it al fajr al sadiq So where where we are going to start? When we are going to start siyam? As we said, it is from the daybreak. We call it al fajr al sadiq Okay, the daybreak means as we are they are saying here, namely the manifest whiteness al bayad. Okay in the horizon. Uh, sometimes you can find, this is important actually, sometimes that you can find there is a white beam from the sky to the earth, which is during thunder, uh, thunder and so on. But actually what we're talking about is horizontal one, okay, horizontal one, that you're going to find the white beam, okay, in the horizon. This is what we call it al fajr al-sadiq, or the day break, the day break and ends at the time of sunset and ends at the, the time of the sunset Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says so no, have relations with them and seek that which Allah has decreed for you I mean offspring and eat and drink until the white thread of dawn becomes distinct to you from the black thread so that you can distinguish between the white thread and the black one. Here the meaning, one of the people who, when he heard this, he brought real white thread and real black, black, black thread and he was looking to them <laughs> during the dawn. So that if he could distinguish between the two, then this is the fetch for him. But actually, this is the literal, literal understanding. But the, the legislative understanding means that you should see the white of this day break and you can distinguish it from the darkness of the night okay becomes distinct for you then complete the fast until the night okay the phrase the white thread of dawn becomes distinct to you from the black thread shows that fasting begins when the the, wit, the whiteness of the day daybreak becomes distinct from the blackness of the night okay the obligatory time of fasting the month of Ramadan begins when the beginning of the month is known. So we're going to start from the beginning of the month. Okay? There are three ways by which we can know about it. So we're going to know about the beginning of the month of Ramadan by three different ways. Okay? The first one, seeing the new moon of the month. For Allah exalted be He. So the first one is what? Seeing the new moon. 
Okay? This is number one. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, So whoever cites the new moon of the month, let him fast. Let him fast. This is the Quran, Surah Al Baqarah. In addition, the Prophet وسلم, start fasting on seeing it, i.e., the new moon of Ramadan. Thus, whoever sees the new moon of the month of Ramadan by himself, he is obligated to fast it. This is an important issue. This is an important issue. So, if you see the moon, if you could see the moon, for example, you are in the 29th, 29th of Sha'ban, and you look by yourself and see and saw this moon, then you should fast Ramadan. Okay? Again, we're going to give some cases where that it is important to know if you are following one country, for example, and you are uh, whether that you should follow the entire country or the committee coming from the uh, from the side of the state in order to see the moon or not, and you saw it by yourself, then it's another issue. There is khilaf bayn al ulama regarding this issue. But again, I want to highlight another issue, which is important. Because uh, some people, they are... Let, let me first look to the three different ways, and then I'm going to raise this question, okay? Um, okay, thus, whoever... So this is the first way that if you see it. Number two is... We said that being informed, so number two, for knowing the beginning of the month, being informed, to be informed of the appearance of the new moon of the month by a just, trust, trustworthy, legally accountable person. Fiqa, dot, adi, okay, person. So for example, if there is someone come to you and he said to you, that I saw the moon in my travel, for example, and you trust him. He is a trustworthy and he is a just and accountable, legally accountable person. Okay? Then you should trust him and start to fast. And this has actually happened in the time of Rasulullah that they were in the time of the month of Ramadan, at the end of the month of Ramadan, and one of the uh, Arabs, they came in the caravan, you know that, they came and when they reached Rasulullah they said to him that we saw the moon, the new moon of Shawwal. Okay? They said that to Rasulullah So Rasulullah accepted their testimony or accepted whatever the, the site they, they are claiming they saw the moon in and he uh, uh, like announced in the Sahaba that this is the Eid, actually. This is the Eid. This is this day. Actually, they were fasting on this day. And then he announced that this is the Eid, the start of the Eid. Okay? So I mean that this means, this manifests itself, that if there is someone that trustworthy, he tell, told you about the new moon, in this case, you should uh, start. Okay? You should start fasting. To illustrate, Ibn Umar, may Allah be pleased with him, narrated the people were looking for the new moon of Ramadan. When I informed Allah's messenger, peace be, and blessing be upon him, that I had <coughs> cited it, this is Ibn Umar, he said, I had cited it. He means Rasulullah observed fasting and commanded the people to fast. Observed fasting, this means that observed fasting, he started fasting, okay, to fast. Related by Abu Dawud. The completion of the month, the third, the third way, or the third method, is the completion of the month of Sha'ban, the month of preceding Ramadan, as 30 days. The month that preceding Ramadan is Sha'ban. So, that if you are not able, if you are not able to see the moon, then you should, then you should complete the 30 days of Sha'ban. Okay? This way is to be applied when the new moon is invisible on the 30th, 30th night of Sha'ban. Through there is nothing, though there is nothing to block vision such as clouds, rain, or the like. In this regard, the Prophet وسلم, said the lunar month can be 29 nights or days, so do not fast until you see the new moon, and do not break fasting until you see it. And if the sky is overcast, فَإِنْ غُمَّ عَلَيْكُمْ 
okay? Then you have to estimate the period to complete the Sha'ba. Okay? These are the three different ways. means that to complete the month of Sha'ba. This is confirmed by the Hadith. Here I want to raise something, okay, which is the sighting of the moon. Let's go to the scientific sighting of the moon. We say that we have now everything from the astronomical point of view and those people who are looking to the moons and stars and they with a great precise they can tell that this is the start of the moon this is this is the start of the month the beginning of the month and we have cited it or not so what do you think about this issue because here what what, what we have mentioned here that there is no mentioning about this issue I mean that we didn't look to the scientific point of view of this it is related merely to someone sees, someone sighted the moon. What do you think? Do you think that this is a kind of backwardness, for example? Or not, not benefiting from the signs? Or what do you think about this issue? Because it's a very, you know, very common debate amongst the ulama, the ulama in general scholars, and even especially contemporary scholars and schools of thoughts in general, they are talking about this issue. They, they say that why we should go with a committee from the state and going, or from the ruler and going different places, trying to side the new moon. They said that no, we don't need to do so. We just can follow our calendar because it's it's something that is very precise, even more or more precise than our naked eyes. Do you have any comment regarding this? Do you have any? kind of justification? Um, I, I think if the astronomers should sight the moon, then it should be possible that someone else should sight it with their naked eyes also. Mm -hmm. Yes. Right? So yes. if they are correct, then it's also possible. It's also likely that it, the Ramadan starts the same time, because even without the astronomers, we could have still seen the moon at that time. Yes, but what if, what if that we couldn't see the moon? Ah. For example, there is a committee that is, they went out and they are trying to side the moon and they found that the, moon, the month of Ramadan should not begin today, for example, it will begin tomorrow. However, from the calendar we can, uh, we can tell that today is the first day of Ramadan, what you are going to do? Ah, I think I will wait till the next day, yeah. like if they say it doesn't... Until you see it? Yeah. yeah. Okay, so this is important issue I want to highlight because there are two different things. We call it ar-ru'ya ash-ra'ya or ru'ya al Actually, when you look to this, what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, wanted from us or what Allah commanded us to do is ar-ru'ya ash Means what? What does it mean by ru'ya ash Means that, can you imagine that in the time of Rasulullah, it could have, have, it could have happened that they might look to the moon and they couldn't see it. But actually the moon is there. So the real beginning of the month should be, for example, today. But they say, we didn't see it, so we are going to start from tomorrow, right? In Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala eyes, the real start, the real beginning of the month should start when you see it. Not with the moon when the moon comes. The moon is considered to be a sign to you. So this is, I mean that this issue it has nothing to do with the ru'ya al-falakiyya, with the astronomy and so on. It is, it is not the point of being scientific or not. It's not, this is not the point. Okay? This is not the point that we are arguing. Assalamu alaikum. It's not the point at all. The point that we want, assalamu alaikum brother. The point that we want to, to, to point out here that yes, we are going to make mistakes. And even Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam the mistakes are there every time because it is our limited human capabilities. We cannot see it, right? So whenever there is something like this, we are concerned with what we call it ru'ya shara'iyah, the legal sighting. Whether the moon is there or not, we are going to follow these kind of instructions, okay? By seeing it uh, by ourselves or by a trustworthy, just, uh, legally accountable person. Okay. This is clear? Okay. Yes, yes, please. Uh, 
sometimes if you don't see it, like if you don't see the if you don't see the moon. Yes. And uh, you say it's not going to start today, it's going to start tomorrow. Uh -huh. And then after that, the Eid, actually, you see the moon and you discover that the first day was supposed to be yes, one day before. Like, there was a case when once Saudi Arabia actually paid, um, what do you call this money? Uh, that you pay when you don't fast a day. Uh, the the, uh, kafara? kafara? Kafara. Okay. So, basically, uh, what, what is the case this? Because uh, Falakian, it was correct that actually we should start that day, but the moon, we didn't see it. And it, uh, it turned out to be a fault after that. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. can we actually do the first day of Eid as just fasting or...? No, this is... Uh, I'm, I'm, I cannot actually um, remember this case that Saudi Arabia, they did so. But again, if it's based on uh, moon sighting, and they they found that still the the moon of um, of Shaba of Shawal mm -hmm. didn't come, for example. Mm -hmm. Then it's okay for for us. We should complete the month of Ramadan and fast on this day, even though Falakian after that they found that it was not it was not right and so on. No, we should go with what we have uh, already cited. I mean that. Even Falakian, if, if it's different than what we have cited, mm -hmm. it's okay. We are going to go with our mistake, which is based on the legal proofs mm -hmm. from the Sharia. This is my point, actually, that I want to highlight. Mm -hmm. This is why the ulama, they said regarding this issue that there is no scientific reasoning regarding this issue. That you should go outside. This is what happened at the time of Rasulullah He was fasting and the people, the Arabs, come, came and said to him, or the caravan people came and say to him that we have sighted the moon. Mm -hmm. And because he trusts those people, then he said it's okay today. Today is the first day of Shawwal and today is Eid. Mm -hmm. And Rasulullah announced it in the among the Sahaba. So uh, it's it's not what I can say, it's not the point that uh, there's something wrong. If the sighting was wrong, okay, then it's okay. No problem. Go with the sighting. This is the re legal channel for us. Okay. okay. Understand it? Let's go. 20 minutes remaining. We won't wrap up, inshallah, within 20, 20 minutes. Question from Facebook. Yes, yes. Say it, please. What if you cannot detect the moon for the first two days? From if you cannot if detect you cannot detect the moon for the first two days. Oh really? First two days, but it's a bit difficult for for this. I couldn't find a possible kind of case happen before, because we have two choices. I mean that the choice is, we are going to sight the moon on 29th of Shabbat. So the people or the committee are going to sight the moon in 20. The night of 20, the night of 30 of Shaban, okay, which is the day of 29 of Shaban, and the night is 30 of Shaban. We're going to sight the moon. If we could see the moon, then Shaban is 29, and Ramadan is tomorrow, okay. That, that's it. If we couldn't, if if we couldn't see it, then we are going to complete the month of Shaban, 30. So we're going to fast the next day. That's it. We cannot do it two days. It's it's impossible, okay. So we are going to complete 30 days, and then after that we start Ramadan, the day after that. Okay. okay. Fasting the month of Ramadan. Okay, let's go now to, it is commanded on whom? Who are commanded to do so? Fasting the month of Ramadan is obligatory upon every legally accountable Muslim. Muslim aqil, okay, legally. Accountable means that he is mukallaf. Legally accountable means mukallaf because we have mukallaf or ghir mukallaf. Some people they are ghir mukallafin, they are not accountable legally. Like for example, the insane person, okay? <clears throat> like the child, okay? He is incountable in this, legally incountable. Muslim. So a disbeliever is not obligated to observe fasting. This is something that we can understand. And if he does, it will not be accepted from him. Because what? What is the main reason for this? For a disbeliever? 
if a disbeliever he is fasting. Okay. Um, sorry, what's the question again? If the disbeliever is fasting Ramadan, the full month of Ramadan. Why would he do so? I mean, <laughs> just a weird case. Do you think that the reward he is going to have rewards for this? No. No. Well, what are the reasons? Like some people they. they, they I heard yesterday I was one, one, of, was one of the girls, she's not Muslim, but she said, like, I want to do fasting. I heard it's good for her. Yeah. yeah she that's said that. A, yes. Because the niya is not, the, what we're, we're doing, it. the niya is not there. Because yeah. some people do it for health or just to, exper to experiment, but they don't do it out of a religious uh, reason. Reason. Yes. Yeah. 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 A niya, as you said, like, the yeah. Niya. So they do not have, yes, they do not have, yes, the niyyah is the most important part. This is why we said that innam al-a'malu niyyah. And basically, actually, they are not Muslims. They are not accepting Islam in general. This is important. Why I'm highlighting this? Why am I highlighting this? Because there is a question, a common question, that is always pulled up in our mind, pops up in our mind that, that if the non-believers, they are doing good actions in general, are they going to be rewarded for them or not okay as, as we said the, the famous uh, example by mother Teresa for example okay so that's the main point the main point here is the need intention is not there he is not a Muslim okay and hadith Rasulullah said that whenever there is a non-Muslim is doing something good in dunya is going to be rewarded in dunya actually he is rewarded I mean that by default he is rewarded okay this is the point that how he is rewarded. How? 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 <laughs> the point is, this is very important concept, Wallahi. Every human being is rewarded in general. If you are going to measure, if you are going to scale one blessing from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, okay, any any kind of blessing, the eyesight, the hearing, your health, okay, that you are being secure that you are a human being, that you are not sane, you are not handicapped, for example, or paralyzed or something like this. You have okay, uh, a kind of countless blessings. Okay? And whenever you are doing something, only one thing, you are going to start to count and say that I've done this and I should be rewarded for this and that. Right? The point is, we are not going to start the counting from here. We should start counting from the very first beginning. That from the very first creation, that you have been nothing. Right? Okay, in Surah al nahl that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created you out of nothing. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has or Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala let you come out from the wombs of your mothers knowing nothing and he has granted you that the ears or the listening capabilities and the eyesight and al-af'ida means that the intellects who give it to you so by default we are blessed do not count from what you are starting to do count from the base even for even for Rasulullah that he is even that he is Rasulullah and supposedly we can think about his deeds and actions in this dunya it is enough for him to admit it admit him to the paradise but even that even Rasulullah said that I am not guaranteed or at least paradise is not guaranteed for me unless that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala immerse me and plunge me into his mercy. Okay? So please do not be do not be mixed with this kind of misunderstanding regarding the right things that his non-believers are doing. And even for us, even the good things and good uh, actions and deeds that we are doing, it is not going to qualify us. It's like, for example, that the the exam out of 100 and the best amongst us he already achieved like 20 25 you are not qualified by any means you are not qualified okay but because you are striving in this dunya doing the best that you could in this dunya I'm going to give you 
like another 25 or 30, then you're going to be qualified. So do not come after that and, 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 and debate with me and argue with me. Say that, hey, why you shouldn't, you should not give me more. It's not your right, actually. It's a blessing from Allah. فَبِرَحْمَةٍ مِّنَ اللَّهِ وَفَضْلٍ This is a mercy from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and a bounty, fadl, from Allah and a grace from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So do not transgress your limits, okay? This is important point regarding this issue. Fasting month of Ramadan is obligatory, as we said, on legally accountable Muslim. So a disbeliever will not be accepted. However, if a disbeliever repents and converts to Islam during the month of Ramadan, he is he is to fast the rest of month without being obliged to make up for the days that he has missed as a disbeliever. If a disbeliever, for example, the first 30, the first 15 days of Ramadan, he he didn't fast or he was fasting, for example, and then he realized that he wants to convert to Islam, he wants to, to embrace Islam. Mm -hmm. Then the counter will start from now. You should go from now and fast. The 15 days that you have done, it's okay and no need for you to make them up. Okay. Okay. After that, moreover, fasting Ramadan is not obligatory upon children, we understand that. But if the children fasted in Ramadan, do you think that he is going to have the rewards or not? I think he'll have the rewards. Yes or no? They used yes. to say that it goes to their parents. Goes to their parents. Because they're teaching. Maybe they will have part of the rewards because the main reason for, for this. Mm -hmm. But actually according to the ulama, yes, they are going to have the rewards inshallah. So who, who did this whenever he was child, then you are going to have the rewards inshallah. And even for the hajj, to the same. For the hajj, you are obliged to do it whenever you are a legally accountable person. I mean that when you are reaching the level of pure, uh, uh, the level to be a man or a woman, okay? But if you did it while you are a child, then all the rewards, inshallah, will be in your scale, okay? But, but, but you need to do it. It's an obligation upon you when you uh, reach to puberty, okay? Yet it is valid if observed by discriminating child. Uh, yes, fasting Ramadan is not obligatory upon children, yet it is valid if observed by discriminating child and it will be regarded as a super something act of worship for him, okay, something that is extra for him. Furthermore, fasting Ramadan is not obligatory upon the insane, which is al maiz al-majnoon, okay, and if the person observes it while being in the state of insanity, uh, Sara, Junoon, something like that. He is not aware of what he's saying, doing, and so on. It's not, not obligated upon him. It will be void due to the lack of intention. <clears throat> it will be void because of the lack of intention, as we know. In addition, fasting Ramadan at its prescribed time is neither obligatory upon one afflicted with an illness, preventing him from observing it, nor upon the one on a journey. If Marid or Musafir. If you are in travel, or you are married, you are a sick person, okay, ill person, then it is not obligatory upon you. But if you want to observe it, if you want to do it, then inshallah it will be rewarded with the with the hardship that you are going to face, okay. So it is up to you if you want. If you are making a travel, it's up to you whether you fast or not. But the ulama they said that the ulama they said that it's up to you as we said. But if there is no hardship, no mashaqqat in the travel itself, mm -hmm. so it's preferred, preferred for you to fast. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. So whoever amongst you, this is from the Quran, is ill or on a journey during them, then an equal number of days are to be made up later on. Okay. The obligation of fasting is directed to both residents and travelers, healthy and ill people. Rich or impure uh, or impure people, such as menstruating women and women in postnatal bleeding period. Nufasa wal mustahawa. Okay. And those in state of unconsciousness, all of them are accountable for the obligation of fasting. 
they are commanded to observe it so as to be aware that it is obligatory upon them and that it has to be observed whether at its due time or later in the case of a legal excuse. So if you are in this period unconscious or you are, as we said, a postnatal bleeding woman, or that uh, you are in administration for our uh, sisters. So in this case, you should make it them make them up. Okay. And said so Aisha was telling that we have been commanded to make up the fasting, but we haven't been commanded to make up prayers. Okay. So fasting is considered to be like a debt in your neck. Okay. As it is prescribed to namely healthy and resident people, excluding menstruating women and women in a state of postnatal bleeding. Others are only obliged to make up for it later, namely menstruating women and women in a state of postnatal bleeding, and those who are too ill to observe it at its due time and can observe it later. However, there are some who may choose either whether to observe it at its prescribed time or later, such as travelers, and ill people who can observe fasting with difficulty but without causing them harm. Do you know this difference now? So the traveler and ill, they have the choice. But the other cases, which is our the, the female and, and the menstruating uh, stuff and so on, then in this case, no, you are not allowed to fast, but you should make it up later. Okay. We're going to wrap up, inshallah, the last paragraph. As for one who breaks fasting during Ramadan due to a legal excuse, a legal excuse, then the excuse is over, such as traveler who returns back. If you are a travel, traveler, you are traveling, and then you landed in your hometown in the middle of the day, at the noon time, for example. So before it was okay for you, but now it is not allowed for you anymore. So you should, you should uh, make fasting or you should observe fasting okay a menstruating woman or a woman in a state of postnatal bleeding who becomes ritually pure a okay what is the meaning of this if 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 the person for example he knows that he is going to land on his hometown for example in the morning or a woman okay that she knows that her period is going to end, okay, before or almost at the end of this night. So in this case, she or he should have the niyyah that he is going to fast tomorrow, okay. Even that because the ulama they have a kind of issue regarding the niyyah that if you are in a state of not ritual purity or ritual impurity, whether it is allowed for you to to make the niyyah or not. So they said it's okay if. If she, for example, know that the end will be in a certain time, tomorrow she, she, can, she can count well or she can know the limits. In this case, it's okay for her. Okay? So, such as a traveler who returns back, or a menstruating woman, or a woman in a state of postnatal bleeding who becomes yes, ritually pure. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, of course. A disbeliever. Yes. You are going to reach, this is the, it's the it needs a faqih, and we have to have fatwa for this. I understand your point. So you are traveling, for example, and you are going to reach your hometown by the sunset, before the sunset, right? Just and I, I, I want to fast. I don't want to, I have, they said like, uh, yes, so, so I want to do the fast. You want to, you, you want to observe fasting. Yes. So should you break your fast on the time of the Maghrib, of the time of the... Uh, no, should I start, like for example, my country start the fasting Fajr is, I know the time mm -hmm. for Fajr. Mm -hmm. And I know I will reach at Maghrib time. Mm -hmm. So should I follow their timing? Uh, the time of the, 
destination yeah. or the time of the original place that you were, right? Yes. Oh, let me check about this. Okay. It, it needs to be checked. Let me check about this. Okay, just remind me in the in the group. Okay. Put this uh, post this question. Okay. So, uh, regains sanity, and a child who reaches um, puberty, they are to observe fasting for the rest of the day, if the excuse is over in the daytime, and to make up for that day afterwards. This is important issue. So. During the day, if already you you reached, or if she already know that the period is ended, or if he is insane, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he uh, regains sanity again, this person, then at the middle of the day, you should from this point, you should fast until the sunset. But the entire day should be made up later. Okay, you understand this point? So that's the, the case here. Okay, observe fasting. Okay, for the rest of the day, if the, if the excuse is over in the daytime, and to make up for that day afterwards. This is important, Allah. Okay. Similarly, if people are informed in the daytime or after daybreak that the month of Ramadan has already begun, they are to observe fasting for the rest of the day, and then to make up for that day later after Ramadan. For example, you are in the, you are in the middle uh, you are in the beginning of Ramadan, let's say that today is the real beginning of Ramadan and you were eating, drinking as we are doing and someone came and said that hey, today is the first day of Ramadan. Then you should stop everything and complete the day until the sunset but you should make up this day later on. Yes, okay? sorry, excuse me, but I thought that um, people said that if you're not fasting from the beginning of the day, you can keep on not, even if you get to know, you continue to not fast and then you make up for it later. Again, this is, uh, I'm, I'm not sure, I couldn't get your point. No, like for instance, um, I, I wasn't fasting and then someone came and said Ramadan started today. Yes. Like some, I heard that you continue to not fast, then you make up really? for it after Ramadan. Maybe there is some other school of thought. Uh, but actually here they are, in this book actually they are in Zawil al It means that they are always looking to the evidence. Uh, so uh, it feel like you didn't have Nia from the start? The star yes, this is another issue because you do not have the Nia. So. But what the ulama, they are following here, which is actually I trust them very much. They said that you should complete until the end of the day, until the sunset, and then you should make it up. Because that I is the reason why you have to make it up, because you did not have... The you didn't day. have, yes, because they are making the, the most, you know, they are doing what I can say. The, the, the thing that is very um, guaranteed, that you are 100% sure that is nothing is defective in this case. Because I think it's the same for, for example, if uh, uh, for example, a woman, her menstruation ends in the middle of the day, mm -hmm. so she has to do the ritual bathing, yes. and she has to observe fasting till the end of the day, but she yes. has to substitute the day. Yes, that's so right. I want to know what is the point of action, because actually you're substitute, why not use the day and eat freely, because you're going to substitute it anyway. Anyway, yes, because this is a holy time for you, you cannot do something because the cause has been lifted, I mean, the, 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 I mean that the reason has been lifted, mm -hmm. so it's not allowed, for example, let me give a kind of example for, for this. Even for the people, that is person that is eating and drinking and all of a sudden he found that the cause of the reason already lifted. So it's not allowed in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for you as an individual to make something in this. And what you have done in the beginning, because it's out of your, out of your hands, it's an excuse for you, for example, then, because this is a holy month and a holiday, then in this case you should make it up later on. Okay? So it is, I mean that it's very, what I can, very sacred time and very holy time. That you cannot even, if, if the cause is lifted, so it's okay. No, no way for you to, because again, making up another day does not, does not substitute this day. I mean that it is in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you have an excuse, then you are going to make something and instead later on. 
but actually the time itself it has a kind of what I can say it is as I said it's a holy time it's a sacred time yeah. we should observe it very well yeah. so that's the point this is the point but maybe. we get the ajr the ajr yeah of course yeah. The, the point that you are going to have the full reward of course mm. I mean that the, the, the point is just the excuse itself has been lifted yeah. so it is not allowed for you during this time to do anything The last thing is, um, similarly, if people are informed in the daytime or after daybreak that the month of Ramadan has already begun, they are to observe fasting for the rest of the day and then to make up for that day later after Ramadan. This is the end of this chapter. Do you have any questions? So if uh, possible, uh, the travel time by here from Korea to Pakistan is around 10 hours or more than 10 hours. Yes. And even if I have to reach to my destination in Pakistan from the airport, it takes more than two hours. And from here also to airport takes much time. Yeah. So uh, is it allowed that uh, if I am very tired or even I am, even I am reached so, I am not taking fasting on the day of travel, but the day I reached in Pakistan at my home, I feel very exhausted and tired. Even I reached by the time of Subur, can I make it also as a uh, no fast and later substitute or I should fast? For the next day? Yeah. For the, no, for the next day you have to, you have to observe fasting. According to what we have said, you have to observe fasting. Even that you you reach your hometown, for example, on the daytime, mm -hmm. then in this case the excuse has been lifted, as we said. So you should observe fasting until the sunset. So uh, if you reach there by suhoor, yes, you can eat and so on. If you feel exhausted, if you if you have something serious, that for example that you are unconscious or you are not going to observe fasting because you are going to fall down or faint or something like this by medical consultation. I mean that there's some some excuses, but if you feel that I'm a little bit tired, I would not know this. Not like this. Any questions? Sisters, brothers? Ayumi, Saina, Ilham, Abu Bakari. And one thing more, yeah. sir. Uh, some, sometimes uh, I feel that some of the blood is uh, like condensing in my nose. Yeah. When I clean my nose, yes. it's not a flowing blood. Mm. It's just a stain of blood or something like yes. that, with the secretion of nose. Yes. So does it make my evolution broke or what do you say? No, actually. No, the nullification of, of occlusion, it has certain uh, certain causes. This is not one of them. How about the, uh, the, the situations which are unavoided by people, like vomiting? Vomit. Like other, I heard that vomiting is confirmed your fasting is broken. If you are going to vomit. If you are, if you are inducing vomiting, yes, oh. in some right. then if you are doing it, it's okay. Is a fahusha means that if it's very, uh, if it's very, yes, very, uh, very, what I can say, it is very big and you cannot control. Yeah. Then they said yes, okay. But but they said that. Other ulama, they said that no. If because the niya, if you are inducing it by yourself, then they said that yes, it would, it would uh, nullify your fasting, for example. And for wudu as well, they said that is a fahusha means that it's very huge and so on. In this case, yes, it also nullifies your, uh, your wudu. But in general, <coughs> uh, vomiting, uh, I mean that just out of vomiting because you have no control over it, it's it's okay. So we should not continue then fasting, right? After vomiting. No, if uh, as I said, if you are if you are induced for for fasting, if you are inducing vomiting by yourself, this would nullify. But if not, 
some of the ulama they said it's okay. No, no but what do you mean by inducing? I am not going intentionally. Uh, yeah, some people they are doing so. They are putting their finger ah. or something. So if you are not intentionally, okay, the ulama, some of the ulama, what I have read actually, and I can be, I can read it again for you, just post it in the group, but some of the ulama, they said it's okay, no problem for you. The fasting is okay, inshallah. Any, any, uh, any other uh, things? Any other question? Yes? I have a question. Now, the thing is, because Ramadan is coming, I feel, uh, I'm not sure, maybe it's like a disease of the heart or something, but I feel like it, I'm approaching it with a heavy heart, that I'm really dreading it. So, is this like a disease of the heart, or is it like normal for people? <laughs> Seriously. Yeah, you, you feel it like that you are going to have uh, kind of heavy days is, uh, yes. is uh, waiting for you. Yes. Like uh, you can feel thirsty from now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. Do you remember, uh, did you attend the last lecture that I gave yeah. regarding Shaban? Yes. Yeah. I think it was important for such kind of question. Yeah. Because I said that during the month of Shaban, it's the time for you to train yourself for fasting. And I said uh, in this lecture also about this question in particular. Mm -hmm. Specifically, I was mentioning about this. And I said that whenever you are waiting for Ramadan, with, uh, with waiting for something heavy and difficult are there, then you have some problems. You have some problems physically, spiritually, and mentally. And you need to adjust them before approaching the month of Ramadan. Because if you are not going to adjust them, you are going to not to feel the real spirituality of Ramadan, especially in the first week, for example. And the problem is, we are not, I said that in the last lecture actually, it was very important I guess, because if you are not going to train yourself, you are not going to be, you are not going to perform well during the month of Ramadan. Because during the month of Ramadan, all of a sudden you will find, you'll find yourself abstaining from drinking, eating and whatever things. And maybe you are studying making your research and you are busy with your schedule and so on, all the people like this. But the point is, if you haven't started this very early on, then you are not going to be trained for this. So you are supposedly in this time, by this time, you should be happy and <coughs> delighted deep inside your heart for approaching the month of Ramadan. Okay? Because of this, because you are going to reclaim your heart, you are going to reclaim your spirit and these kind of flames between you and your God. So if you are not observing these benefits really in front of you and you are just overlooking them and looking to that, I'm going to be very thirsty and I'm going to be very hungry and it is long day, it is from like 3.30 until 7 something, okay, 7.30, okay? It's very long. One thing that I want to add, do you know that in the time of Rasulullah before it has been decreed, that the time of fasting was from Isha, Isha until the sunset. So the time that you are going to eat and drink only like one and a half hour. One and a half hour only. And even the Sahaba, they were, some people they were fainting during the day because of this. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has abrogated this. In Surah Al-Baqarah you'll find the three, the three ayat dealing with this is, have been abrogated. Uh, and then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned about the, the start from the dawn until the sunset and you have the free until sun, from Maghrib from the sunset until the dawn or until Fajr you can eat drink and do everything so uh, I think that it needs a kind of amending your heart and yourself before this and, and you need to to really think about it and to listen to lectures, listen to people uh, talking about this, and then you can, after that, inshallah, you will be in the good mood for starting Ramadan. Yes? There is question. Yes. Uh, is it okay to think about food when you are fasting? And can we say the word hungry out loud? <laughs> <laughs> um, Okay, so think we are making food for us, women. We are making food. Yeah, we are thinking, thinking about, about food all the time. 
Yes, uh, uh, regarding this, regarding thinking about food or eating and drinking, it's okay because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not hold us accountable on the thoughts in our minds and intellects. It's okay. No problem with this. Only we're going to be held accountable for our actions. Okay, so if you are eating or drinking, then at this point you are going to be uh, violating the commands. Uh, but saying out loudly, I'm hungry and so on, it seems that <clears throat> he is looking to this part only from Ramadan. And he should be busy with other things. Wallahi, if you are going to make yourself busy with the recitation of the Quran, ibadah, and dhikr, and so on, you will not feel that. <laughs> that's the point that you are feeling. Do you, do you remember I said that before? Feeling this kind of uh, pain of the uh, being hungry and thirsty and so on. This is directly related, directly related to your spir spiritual occupation in the time being. For example, if I said to you that you are watching, for example, a movie that is very uh, thriller, for example, something that takes your breath away, your breath away, and you are looking to it and staring to it for continuously two hours, maybe that you have some pains, or maybe that you are hungry or thirsty or something, but you are highly taken by this, right? It's very similar to Allah and Ramadan. If you are highly taken by the virtues of Ramadan, you will not feel the other things. Other people, in the time of the sunset, they are not eating too much because they want to make tarawih. And then you will find that yourself, your stomach and so on, adjusted. I mean that you're not going to feel hungry. Look to yourself at the last week of Ramadan. You're not going to, be, to feel hungry in the daytime as you have feel before in the beginning of Ramadan. Why? Because you trained your stomach. It's not the time for stomach to complain right now. Okay? So that's the, the point. Put yourself in the training state, <clears throat> and inshallah we'll get the benefits. She, she hears this, or yeah. he hears? okay? Yeah. She comment. We need to cook, Ustad. That's why. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Inshallah, I will be double rewarded for this. Yeah. For cooking, inshallah, I will be double rewarded because you are doing this. For example, for male or for men in general, we are away from the kitchen and so on. We cannot smell and so on. So our appetite is not, you know, not, uh, not, uh, not forcing us for anything. But for you, you are in front of the food and you are preventing yourself and abstaining from this. So inshallah, will be double rewarded. And this is actually important for your family, your husband, your children. So inshallah, double rewarded. Any other questions from from other people or online? Okay. Jazakallah khairan for this. Inshallah, see you in the meeting.